images they see of themselves and the people who claim to speak on their behalf. That's what we're discussing on We the People today. I want to start with Shah Rukh Khan. <coughs> Shah Rukh, My Name is Khan has been described by some as an important film, not just because of the circumstances in which it was, it finally ran to full houses, but because you as a Muslim in real life have played a Muslim character on screen who isn't in, afraid to embrace his religiosity and he's still a nice guy. We don't see too much of that in Hindi cinema, do we? The reason we do have caricatures, whether they are uh, Muslim or Hindus or even Christian for that matter, is uh, so that you know very quickly you understand this is where this person uh, uh, comes from, this is what it belongs to and quickly it is very important that we need to know his religion in this film. So those are characters that we do, we are actually, uh, uh, we are to be blamed for that, all of us, uh, filmmakers. It's a kind of shortcut. It's a shortcut that this is now Christian. Hai. So, uh, Margaret, and she will come out of the church, or a Muslim, hai, Salim, and you know, he'll have a beard and he'll, and uh, it is not in any which way to say that it's a stereotype, it's just to uh, do it fast, okay? But uh, I, I think when people start making a film about a full, uh, uh, full character. I mean, it's not just coming in between, like Say Khan was when Karan decided. My logic was, and I could be wrong because uh, I'm not a, uh, I don't have full knowledge of Islam or uh, being a Muslim, to be honest. But uh, the logic was that can we play him like we play a hero? We don't need to play the religious part of him as the hero. Let it be absolutely normal because I'm a Muslim, and uh, I don't wear it any other way. If you have a discussion on Islam, like all of us <coughs> will be able to tell you here, all of us agree that yes, we can clarify point of views about Islam, how much ever knowledge we have, depending on that. But uh, we have never really, really gone out and started stating that this religion uh, is good or bad or nice or fantastic. But and isn't there a defensiveness sometimes? Now, <coughs> lately, I think there is a defensiveness uh, that, uh, you know, everybody starts saying, uh, and that's what we're trying to explain through the film, that listen, we don't need to be defensive. Just be yourself, uh, be your religion, and be casual about it, normal about it, like you are in your houses. You don't need to really uh, prove to the outsider any other way except by explaining. And but there's that scene in the film, you do your namaz. And, and you do your namaz despite the fact that a lot of the others around you are saying, no, don't do this And at least I can't remember the last time I saw, uh, uh, you know, a hero who's also a namazi. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe not in India, uh, <laughs> we have uh, but uh, to be really honest, jitna uh, malum hai, namaz I was always taught, niyat se padhi jati. Uh, you have to believe in it yourself. Nobody can teach you. We are taught panch vak namaz padna zaruri hai. But not every Muslim follows it. Uh, somewhere down the line... Do you follow it? No, I, I'm not able to follow it. And I'm very honest about it. I would love to, uh, but I can't. But I think of Allah every moment of my life. So my logic is that let's play it like that. That see, if you are not doing it for any reason, if in this film, the scene that the couple is not doing it, and another scene is very beautiful, which says that Allah will understand. You don't have to wear the hijab. So God will understand if you are stressed right now. But uh, those who believe, go and do it, and it's absolutely all right. So we wanted it to be as normal without picking on the other character and saying, "Tum kyun nahi padhe namaz?" Ye khalat hai. It's okay. I understand. You're scared. Uh, you're defensive. You're worried right now to read namaz in front of people who you believe may not understand what you're doing or look down upon it or not rightly. But there's another character who says, but I think it's absolutely okay uh, mm. to go ahead and do it because niyat me meri is namaz padna hai. So I think I would say those are the teachings I believe in also, personally. In, in your actual life? In my actual life. I, I truly believe uh, that it is, uh, <coughs> my religion does define me, most certainly. I'm very proud to be a Muslim, but I, what people would say is I'm an easier going Muslim. I'm a moderate Muslim, uh, but I'm as Muslim as Muslim can be, to be really honest. <laughs> I guess moderate Muslim is yet another stereotype that the media made up, uh, the liberal media. Kabir Khan, you with the opposite argument, uh, which I find interesting, about saying that in a sense our cinema would have arrived when you can <coughs> have a regular hero who happens to be called Shah Rukh, who doesn't have to be this person who wears his religion on his sleeve. And we haven't kind of got to that yet, have we? No. Every time there's a Muslim character in a film, he's there because the plot <coughs> demands a Muslim to be in that story. I'm saying... Um, Dostana, John can be a Muslim character. The film remains exactly the same, not a iota changes, which is his name is Rizwan. I mean, could that have been? I totally could have been, but we didn't. 
and no one does. Nobody, they say he's right. And no one does. And that's the point. Why doesn't anybody? Go ahead. Neither have I. I mean, even my films, the the protagonists have been Muslims because the story demanded it. But I'm saying that's the time when we'll actually be able to break out of stereotypes. The problem is right now, whenever we portray a minority, it's always a stereotype because that minority is. His religious or her religious identity is playing a part in the story. We need to be able to slip in uh, other sort of religious uh, characters without having to deal with their religious identity. That's when we'll truly start breaking away from stereotypes. <coughs> but Alec, if I can ask you, is there a problem with that formulation? Because somehow in the way we all think, you're a liberal Muslim uh, almost only if you're non-religious. Yeah. And the moment you say, you're immediately branded a conservative, almost a fundamentalist. Yeah, and the problem is that I think Islam is uh, misunderstood. And uh, two years ago, in fact, uh, this thing bothered me a great deal. And I asked the uh, Molanas and all the, the, the religious uh, leaders of Islam, what is it? Is Islam saying that we believe in violence? And this is the biggest point. And I was told on very good authority that no, Islam in fact means peace, the very word. It's like shalom in, in uh, Israel, which is used you know, in the Jewish world. And this means that in the Quran, that if you kill a single innocent person, it means that you're going against the Quran. And that's once, that was, once that was clear, I then said if so many fatwas have been passed yeah. by the religious heads of Islam, I then spoke to my friend Maulana Badni and I said, why can't you pass a fatwa saying that anyone who kills an innocent person is going against the Quran? And I must say very courageously, and he'll tell you more about it, he then devised a fatwa which was pronounced in Again, Delhi terrorism. in 2007. And the, uh, just to come back to your main, main point, which is... <coughs> You don't have to be a liberal anything to be accepted in society. Idea of God, and this is what's misunderstood in our country, that the idea of God, he is a God of love and peace, but and Alec, not a but God Alec, of violence. But Alec, nobody would disagree with you, and yet clearly it's not that simple. And, and there is a reason it's not that simple. And current. It's interesting that this is something that has obviously occupied you, you know, whether it was your previous film, Qurban, in which actually there is, a, there is an actual terrorist, a Muslim who takes to terrorism, or, you know, my name is Khan. Why, why is this such an abiding issue for you? I'll tell you, three years ago, <coughs> why, the reason I really made this film uh, was I was in New York and I was with six people. Uh, three of them were investment bankers, two of them... Oxford graduates doing very well in, in very well in, in New York, all of, of Indian or Asian orientation. And the conversation they had on that table, and I actually walked out <coughs> an hour before that dinner ended, because I was completely disgusted with their their thoughts and their ideologies about Islam, about Muslims, about their 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 perception of the religion and what they thought. They're educated, affluent, mm. well traveled people. True. And it appalled me that they, with all that education, knew nothing and were talking complete nonsense. And I said, you know, I'm not Muslim, but I'm human. I'm a human being and I've been taught certain values by my parents. And I felt that people who have these graduation certificates lying so potently placed in their, in their draw, in drawing rooms and they show off their so-called uh, liberal attitude towards the world at large, if they can go against an entire community on the basis of certain information they read in the New York Times or hear the news, yeah. I think then that is something that needs to be addressed by at least me. As a filmmaker, so I have a platform that's impressionable. Mm. And that's the reason why I took it up. Um, Sharukha, <coughs> have you ever experienced uh, the prejudice? Of course, Kabir has spoken about you know not getting a US visa a few times because of your name. Uh, you were stopped famously uh, at an airport, held on to for a couple of hours. <coughs> Some people thought that was the prelude to, you know, my name is Khan. Yeah, right. <laughs> Obama's on our speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> but had, had you, let's say, post-2611, do you feel, and because Najib Jung has written about this, that the pressure on Muslims to wear their patriotism, to wear their badge of loyalty, do you feel that even at your stage in life, somehow that, that you are looked upon as a Muslim to make that condemnation clear all the time, that, you're, that even you are expected to clarify your position on your religion and terrorism and fundamentalism and all the rest of it. See, I'll, I'll, I'll be very honest. I mean, uh, what I say sometimes on public platforms, 
and I say them because I'm an entertainer, I'm an actor, but I don't think uh, ever, ever if I'm a, a question uh, or have to clarify my stand on being a Muslim or an Indian, I would actually from my heart never clarify it. But yes, of course, if somebody's not understanding it, I'd say it. I've had no uh, big prejudice against me, and that's what I want all the young Muslims to know very, very clearly, wherever they are coming from. That first, let's just get that out of our heads, that people are prejudiced. But is that see, because you're Shah Rukh Khan? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. See, Before uh, you were Shah Rukh Khan, I guess those were different times. We didn't, know, I was we didn't 25, live in... 20 yeah. to 25 is the time I can talk about. But I've never, never, never been picked on uh, about my, uh, you know, uh, the, the religion I belong to. And I really want this to be very clear. If we keep on also thinking, see, forget the fact that there is a certain section of people because of the action of certain section of people think that Islam is a violent religion. Accept it. But we as uh, Muslims, I think we need to be very clear. Let's take this out that I need to explain it. Like, I'll tell you very honestly, my kids get stopped at um, security because their name is Khan also. It comes on that in America specifically. They have those SSS mm -hmm. things on it. They go, so they say, why have we stopped? So I say, you know, it's fun. We are special. So they just go on. They really do. They, we're taken to a different section with those feet on the ground. So they just stand and I say, we are special. You know, you guys are stars. So, you know, hopefully they'll grow up thinking they're Muslim. But I don't have any issue with it because I think it's all right. If action of some people have put a little blot or uh, to say the least, on the whole religion, I think we need to accept it and say it's all right and we're not paying a price for it. Uh, that I won't do. I will never but try to tell you. I'm not going to justify anyway and to anyone how good it is to be a Muslim. I'm not going to justify to anyone how wonderful it is to be an Indian. But I'm very clear that yes, we have to accept the fact that there is a blot. There is some kind of a dog. Mm -hmm. And if it is there, certain things are going to be said against us. This is the life we lead. These are the times we have created. This is the world we have chosen upon ourselves by the action of you. Now, that is why it is more important that if all of us start thinking like this, okay, look, uh, let me go and let Karan decide. I like this guy, Pui <coughs> Sharuk. He's talented. He's an actor. And yes, I'm not a specialist in my religion. I'm not a specialist. Yeah. Many a times people ask me, do you do this? And I'm like, no, but I'm still a Muslim. Yeah. You do this, like even singing and dancing, in a certain sense, in a, in a very uh, uh, orthodox, orthodox sense, is yeah. the wrong thing to do. But I live, I make a living out of singing and dancing. So how do I explain? My logic is, please can we understand the, all the clergy, all the uh, mullahs, all the ulemas who know that they're specialists. Just because I'm not a specialist does not make me less of a Muslim. But that's the hub in a sense of the debate. Najib Jung, you wrote a very interesting piece saying, <coughs> every time there's a terror attack, the, the Muslims are asked upon to prove their patriotism, you know, uh, in an overt way. But in a sense, what we're hearing here is that these are the times we live in. I remember uh, Saif saying after Qurban, Karan, that, you know, that old cliche that all, uh, that we have to recognize the fact that while all Muslims are not terrorists, all terrorists in the way that we recognize them on the global stage are Muslim. Barkha, karma aate rahe, Hindustan banta raha. It's 1200 years, 1300 years since the Muslims started coming to India. The Musliman is part of the DNA of India now. There is no denying that. What is concerning and disconcerting are, are posters like this. Where is this Muslim? I don't know. The Muslim of today is a regular guy. And which is, which indeed, image disconcerts you in particular? The skull cap and the beard, the woman yeah, in the burqa? There's a gentleman sitting next to you with the skull I, cap I and the beard. I entirely agree. I entirely agree. Yes. But this and this, this type is perhaps less than a percent in India. The other guys are completely regular. I have a university with 20,000 boys and girls. The <laughs> girls are dressed as these boys here, or the, these girls here. The boys are like this. You are a product. Kabir is a product of, of Jamia. Yeah. Are you different? The young Muslim of India today is part of this. India is in his DNA. He is looking for jobs here. He is looking to lead a life here, a regular life here. And so it hurts him a bit if there is a riot, if there is a program in, in, in Gujarat, which he believes is state managed. So are you saying, in a sense, and that's interesting because that's where I found the difference in Kabir and, and Shah Rukh's argument when you talk about the... That's why the Nawaz scene is so compelling because maybe Najib, you would argue that when Shah Rukh wears his skull cap in, in the film, that's the stereotype of a Muslim that isn't the dominant image of the modern Indian Muslim. No, the skull cap wearing during a cap is only a mark of respect that you, when you bow to the Almighty, your head is covered. And therefore the skull cap is just symbolic of that thing. But in India, when the Islam came in and well, there was a huge influence of, of Hinduism over Islam in a way, 
then they learn to cover their heads. But that's only a mark of respect. Islam nowhere mandates to you that you should be covering your head all the time. Dr. Nayak, uh, you know, you, you're on TV more than I am. Uh, so, <laughs> but, but the image, this construct of this image, which Najib says is actually offensive to a lot of people of our generation. Where does this construct come from? That when you think of the Muslim in visual images, almost always is somebody like yourself. Uh, actually, as far as Muslims are concerned, when I see a Muslim wearing a cap, having a beard, I mean, I'm proud of it. When I see a lady covering her head, I'm proud of it. First, you should understand what is the meaning of the word Muslim. Muslim means the person who submits his will to Almighty God. And Islam, to understand Islam, don't look at the Muslims. To understand Hinduism, don't look at the Hindus. Go to the original scriptures. So if you go to the scriptures, the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, I mean, I'm sorry I differ with uh, uh, Brother Najib, there are various Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, if you read volume number 7, in the uh, uh, book of Breast, that the Prophet covered his head. So covering the head is the Sunnah of the Prophet. Of the Prophet. So to say that covering the head is not a part of Muslim identity is totally wrong. The beard is a part of the Muslim identity, wearing the cap, or at least covering the head, whether with a scarf or with a uh, uh, gathera like the Arabs do. But, but sir, what about what Shah Rukh said? And I know a lot of my friends say this. That, and all of us, no matter what faith we come in, we interpret our faiths differently. We take away some things, we don't do some things. Does that make us any less of Hindus, Muslims, Christians? No, as I said, that Muslim is a person who submits will to God. So you cannot say a liberal Muslim or a moderate Muslim. You can say a practicing Muslim or partly practicing or non-practicing. <laughs> That's more correct. You know, and to understand Islam, don't look at the Muslim, don't look at me. Go to the scriptures. That is the reason I give talks on Islam and comparative religion. But so as far as I the student is concerned. Uh, Kabir, so yeah. I, I find that uh, a too narrow a definition of Islam. I personally reject all rituals. But Islam is part of my culture and my ethos. I'm as proud a Muslim as any, any, uh, anybody else on this podium. But I don't have to wear it on my sleeve. And I think that's too narrow a definition of Islam. Uh, I'd like to make a point. Yeah. Uh, they talked about people being uh, uh, stereotyped because of the beard and, and the cap and the hijab. <clears throat> then we should say that all Sikhs are stereotyped. Anyone who wears a turban is and wears not, a beard. It's not the same, no, no. Though. It's, not the, it's same, not the same. But what has happened, I'll tell you, in fact, India has become, in a strange sense, more liberal because when Yusuf Khan entered the film industry and adopted the name of Dilip Kumar, that was a time when the whole of India was pretty prejudiced against Muslims, let me tell you. And Meena Kumari, who was she? She was also a Muslim. Why were all the names? Shah Rukh is an amazing example of a Muslim who is now the Badshah of Bollywood with a Muslim name. He didn't have to change his name. So something has w happened. Would you have ever changed your name? To Akshay Kumar, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would never change my name. Now the reverse is happening, Barkha. I know of boys who come from small towns, want to become actors. They change their name to Khan because they think yeah. that's the badge of honor. That's the way to become a director of success. No, no, it's Khan or Kapoor. Sorry, Najib? But Dilip Kumar has now become Allah Rakha Rahman. Yeah. Well, that's the change. But, but, but now I, he's no longer a star. Yeah. Uh, Shahrukh, you want to make a point and then Soha and Madhuri. Yeah, just, yeah. I just, just want to say one thing. That, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I just want to know very clearly, and I'm a Muslim, and I want to know, is it more important for me to look Muslim and see Muslim or to feel Muslim? I fully respect the scriptures. I fully respect uh, all the hadiths. I yeah. have read the Quran in my own uh, way, uh, in Arabic and in English. But I think it's time has come, uh, and this genuinely is an appeal, that it is more important to feel Muslim, to feel than to look Hindu, it. than to look it. And, I, and if you do, I mean, if you do, it's absolutely cool. And if you <laughs> don't, it's absolutely cool. Doctor, I, I mean, quick I response to that, and I've got two guests I waiting to speak. the best is to practice Muslim, absolutely. number one. <laughs> yes. Appearing is, is important, but lower down. I'm not saying appearing is the most important. For a person to practice Islam is more important. Beard comes lower down. Beard is not... In the 70 major sins that it's not there. But you know, what about what Kabir is saying? And we, there was a story of a young boy whom I interviewed who studies in a convent school in Madhya Pradesh. And he's a poor boy. And he, the, the, the school rules wouldn't allow him to wear a beard. He went all the way to the Supreme Court to say, I must be allowed to keep my beard. Otherwise, I prefer not to study. And he actually dropped out of school for a while because of that. The Supreme Court eventually ruled 
in his favor. And that is my next question and I want to take that to, to Madhuri Saab. Madhuri Saab, you're a very interesting character for me because at one level, you have organized, as Alex said, all of these fatwas against terrorism and all of that. But you also had a resolution against the singing of Vande Matra. And these kind of resolutions, I know many of my friends would say is what stereotypes Muslims. Baat ye hai ke Vande Matram Gana बिल्कुल अलग चीज है अलग चीज गा, हां गाने के लिए जिद करना बिल्कुल एक अलग चीज है कोई जबरदस्ती गवाना चाहे और नहीं गाए या हम ये कहें हम नहीं गाते तो फिर हम स्टीरियोटाइप हो जाएंगे टेररिज्म की मुखालिफत करेंगे तो बहुत अच्छे हो जाएंगे ये ये जो डबल डबल मामला चलता है ये ठीक नहीं अभी मेरे दाढ़ी नहीं हो और कुर्ता पैजामा नहीं हो ये भी जो पगड़ी से तो लोग बहुत डरते हैं ना कहते हैं ये तो एक बच्चा एयरपोर्ट पे कहता है मदनी साहब नहीं मदनी साहब मामा मामा देखो बिल्लादीन जा रहा है <laughs> है ना तो क्या हो गया है अब ये सब मैं उतार दूं तो मैं एक रीजनेबल मुसलमान हो सकता हूं एक ऐसा मुसलमान हो सकता हूं जो बहुत अच्छा आदमी है और अगर मैंने ये पहन लिया तो ख्यालात मेरे कितने अच्छे हों ख्यालात नजरियात आइडियोलॉजी ये है बेसिक चीज या बेसिक चीज हमारी दिखने वाली चीज है दैट्स द रिवर्स स्टीरियोटाइप दैट द मोमेंट यू सी द बियर इन द स्कल कैप इट्स गॉट टू बी अ फंडामेंटलिस्ट क्वेश्चन आई वांट टू गेट सोहा एंड शी बीन लिसनिंग वेरी पेशेंटली ऑल दिस वाइल सो एज समबडी हु इज ग्रोन अप इन अ सेंस इन अ इन अ इन अ हाउस ऑफ मिक्स्ड रिलीजन फॉर यू इन अ सेंस डू यू फील दैट पब्लिक गेज डू यू फील यू नो मेनी पीपल हैव क्वेश्चनड माय लेबलिंग ऑफ और माय लुकिंग फॉर द मॉडरेट मुस्लिम येट देयर आर अदर्स हु से दैट we don't hear enough moderate voices we either hear the 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 religious voices or we hear the non believing because i voices. don't think anybody is really interested in what the moderate muslim has to say because it's not very interesting it's sort of boring we're represented by extremists who have violent opinions perhaps i'm talking about vandals and i think maybe also more recently i was asking my mother when i was asked to come on this show i said in your time when you married my father and you had an inter religious marriage which presumably at that time 40 years ago was more controversial than it is today were you ever asked to defend your identity to defend your choice of religion what it means to be hindu or muslim the way that we are today and she said no not at all it was a no comment issue you just said no comment and you moved on in life in the over the past maybe ever since i've been in cinema certainly it's an issue and there is uh, people do ask me do you feel aggravated by what is happening as a muslim do you feel the need to stand up for for your religion because it is being misrepresented in the media uh, and i think for me religion is a very private matter uh, it's between my maker and me and it's not something that i would want to discuss in any public forum even this one we should be talking about an indian identity as opposed to a muslim identity i think okay i want to take that as my cue to take a break but is it as i said to alec earlier is it that simple is there also a sort of denial within the community is the secular debate caught up in a certain amount of dishonesty and there's also the reverse stereotype so we'll take a quick break and then we'll take the questions that i'm sure a lot of people have here that's coming up Welcome back to We the People. Is popular culture, in a way, responsible for stereotyping the image of the Indian Muslim, or is it a reflection, in a sense, of some shades of truth, at least, that the Muslim community sometimes feels defensive about? Before we return to our panel, let's hear from some people in the audience. Yes. Uh, my question is: uh, Much as it's easy for a Shah Rukh Khan or a Sohail Ali Khan or a Kabir Khan to say that we can be liberal and still we can get along in the society. what happens to the younger generation of muslims is it easy for them to say that we we want to be liberals we don't want to carry ourselves into the conservative group or are they actually shadowed by the gather of the people around them who wants to take that i mean someone who's had an experience in a sense with straddling between orthodox shall what would you say to your kids i mean how important is it for you to ha- for them to have a sense of their faith no the very clearly they need to have a sense of their faith because my parents uh, have brought me up with this faith and i'm very very proud of uh, this faith it's taught me a lot of nice things and i think a lot of the things that i lead in life do leading an immensely commercial and a glamorous life so to say from the outside 
I think all the good things that I think I'm doing because I always go back to my faith and remember, okay, we have to be tolerant and I want my children to know this faith very But if clearly. your kids asked you, what is my religion, what would you say? <clears throat> my daughter did ask me one day, she came back and uh, she said, you know, teacher, once somebody asked her, that, are you a Hindu or a Muslim? And I said, say you're a Christian. It's absolutely all right. We are Indians. Let's not go there. But yes, I make them pray as much as I can uh, in the Both Islamic faiths. way. My wife does it in her faith. And the fact is that we are very clear that we accept it with ease. Kabir, you wanted to say I was just saying it's a very idealistic sort of a thought, but I wish religion was something we were all allowed to choose when we were 21. Mm. The issue is we all born into religions. They are habits. We don't choose our religions. It's an interesting thought. Now, no, this point I'd like to comment on. I lecture to college students, and one of the things is, I lecture, do you want to follow the same values as your parents. Why are you a Muslim? Why are you a Hindu? Why are you a Christian? And nobody knows why. And then finally they realize that they've inherited from their parents a religion. But you don't have to. But I refuse to Khabib inherit said, from my parents a religion. But Alec, as Khabib I gave said, it up. religion can often be cultural more than scripture driven. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just the exposure you grew up with. Let, let's take a question from this young lady here. Yes. I really don't understand what is being a moderate Muslim. I think I'm just a Muslim. I'm a normal Muslim. Uh, I don't find any difference wearing a hijab. I don't feel different from any other lady sitting around over here. So what is such a big issue about Can it? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, Suppose sure. you had a friend yeah. who is also your faith and they did hmm. not want to wear the hijab. Would that be okay with you? I don't have a problem with what she follows. Though what I follow, what I believe in, I would really like to explain it to her. Okay, see, this is what I believe in. And uh, it depends. On, it's obviously her own wish. Like faith cannot be forced. But it can always be explained and told, see, this is right and this is wrong. Now it's up to you whether you believe it or you follow it. Just, just a minute. I'm sure someone has a question on that, but I want to go back to Karan on this. One of the interesting images of My Name is Khan was <coughs> Shah Rukh's sister-in-law, the character who plays Shah Rukh's sister-in-law, being forced after 9-11 to go out without her hijab. And in a sense, that was the vulnerability of the Muslim in post-9-11 America. But you use the hijab in a sense as a symbol of religious independence. But a, a lot of women have not resolved the question of the headscarves. To me, the hijab is truly representative of the identity of the woman and it's also a part of her religion and what brought her up. Uh, this is, came out of our research. I went to various organizations like CARE and ACLU in America and there were millions, I mean lots of women in America who had to give up the hijab because they didn't want those stairs at tube stations or food markets. Families forced them. There were husbands that really, really forced them to give up the hijab. But eventually, I felt she touched base with herself, herself and her identity. There were moments that we actually had to edit out where throughout there were times where actually she would just, her hand would go towards the head because she just felt different and that bothered her on an emotional, on a physical level. Can I just say yeah. one thing? I don't think that action condemns, I condemn the people who've done, say, what we showed in the film or anywhere in the world, but I don't condemn it as an anti-religious act. I condemn it as an anti-free will act. If she wants to, faith is about free will, if she wants to wear it, it's absolutely all right. It could be a hijab, it could be a bikini, it could be a t-shirt, it could be a shirt, it could be whatever. I have a problem with intimidation. But if I have a shock, 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 I have not. If somebody tells you you cannot, you must not. That is what I have a problem with in a country where we're supposed to respect free speech. Najib, but look at the debate in France. Sarkozy wants to ban any overt religious symbolism, whether it's the turban or or, or the hijab in that is public. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It's How ridiculous. Can you ban? How can you ban somebody's belief? It must be personal choice. There are two aspects here. One is the forcibly taking off of the hijab. You know, such thing always happens when a community is under attack for a circumstance, which is 1984, Sikhs were made to shave off their heads in yes. India. Similarly, a lot of hijabi women were made to take off. I struggled with the other aspect of the statement the young lady made there. She would counsel her friend. Now, there lies the problem that when you start counseling, and, and all proselytizing religions, unfortunately, believe in counseling, which may not be acceptable. And Dr. Nayak, that's what you do. Yes, of course, that's my <laughs> Because that's the verse of the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter 310. It is the duty of every Muslim, Allah says, 
kun tum khaira ummat ne khijat le nas ta mirun bil maafi thon mein munkar that we have made you the best of community because you enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong but if you feel that you are doing something wrong if you are doing something wrong <laughs> if i feel that that you are doing an act which will harm you for example you are having drugs so it's my duty as a good human being to tell you don't have drugs going to harm you that time people won't object so similarly when i feel if something if, if uh, someone is doing something wrong which is bad for his human body and if i tell him so why do people object but that's my belief but, but kabir but, would call this a lot of ritualism that creates that construct it's not ritualism yeah, so in this whole uh, yeah. free will i mean i'm sorry i'm just uh, i'm not a, trying to uh, go if i could ask you a question uh, does your mother wear a hijab your mother wears a hijab yeah. now here's where the free will comes in i'm just it's it's a thought i wonder if she would still choose to wear if her mother was not wearing a hijab and when she came of um, age she was given this it's choice it's our own model very difficult it's very difficult it's really difficult. like answer this question it, because so uh, i'm i'm in i yeah, sort of we've been born and brought up in a muslim yeah. family and i've seen this in my own uh, large extended family and i've seen only the parts of the family where the mother has been wearing hijab the daughter has taken to hijab my cousins and the mother who has not been wearing hijab strangely the daughter has not taken up the hijab so i'm a little confused about this so free will is a complicated thing I, okay i i'm seeing lots of hands here before i go back to yeah yeah hang on hang on hang on go ahead i'm a muslim i think the burqa or the hijab should be personal choice as she said that she is okay with the friend who is not wearing but she'll explain to her that this is wrong so that means she does take it somewhere that it's wrong if you're not wearing it which is not you know because at the end of the day what i don't know islam too much but i know that much that been passed on to my to me but, by my parents know, would you, would you, to me but, by my you know, parents would you, would you she's entitled to her opinion would you consider it wrong if i told her darling wear dresses not a t-shirt no Can't we that's take it as easy as that but i would also I say but you know sharuk i'm not comfortable no, we'd have a discussion have, about it yeah, yeah. once again let me just hear some more voices on it doctor now give me a second there are lots of voices here i just want to get some of them uh, my mom doesn't wear a hijab and i remember that when my sister entered her 10th uh, she's my elder sister so she opted to wear a hijab because she wanted to wear it <coughs> unfortunately she was she did not she was not accepted by the society where we live in and there used to be continuous query about it that as to why she wearing a hijab in fact all the society used to think that my mom has become very very strict with my sister so you're saying your, so your mother doesn't yeah, wear that, one but your sister wore one of free will yeah, yeah that, that, but that's, that's the society will. that i would accept as free will yeah. you want to stand up and just make your point then i go back to the panel you know see the point is she wore a uh, she decided to take the hijab after her 10th standard did anyone ask her why and if people were being curious about it i mean it's natural if you've seen someone growing up in front of you and her mom doesn't wear a hijab and suddenly she decides to don one you are going to worry right it's like what's happening why is she doing this okay one second one second that's the operative part you are going to worry hang on guys hang on one second yeah <laughs> we'll go back to the panel you want to say something yeah why would you worry i mean if yeah. tomorrow if i start wearing western clothes will you worry about my psychological effect i don't think so <laughs> okay she said she used the wrong word but there's some serious questions at the heart of this and i want to go back to the construction of that image uh karan when you as a filmmaker want to portray a muslim uh how important was it for you when you were projecting sharuk and you obviously had a lot of things to say about religion to make him a practicing muslim as dr nayak calls it we were very clear from the very beginning that there was rizwan khan to me is a as a is somebody who professes humanity and is not carrying islam on his sleeve only in pray when he prayed in reverence he wore the cap but there was nothing islamic about his look because for me he is an ambassador of humanity not an ambassador of islam and i That's think the something. best line that i've heard in any bollywood film when zareen wahab as the mother says there are no good hindus and bad hindus there are no good muslims and bad muslims there are good human beings and bad human beings and right. that is the whole point i can actually tell you there are fissures there are fault lines in our society and we are trying to navigate them here and najib since you said who are these images these are not these are not the people that most muslims would recognize i'm sort of interested in the construct of that image where does it come from i am also very concerned at these images how that image has come partly it has come from the deprivation of the muslim society and the ghettoization of muslim society and their desire to hang out together it comes from muslims not getting homes in places moving into ghettos and then surviving in their own little dens there is where it happens it also happens much thanks to i mean we have two doyans from the film industry here 
that the image of Muslims that have been done, this pan chewing fellows, you know, only saying adab and so on and so forth and this kabbal, is not so. But a large number of these images have come from this. But that's now, no longer the case in modern cinema. The projection of uh, Islam has completely changed. This used to be a case in the 70s and 80s and I do take blame yeah. for, as a representative of the yeah. movie industry but it's yeah. not the case anymore. But uh, Shahrukh, is there an image of your community in images around you that has bothered you? Maybe not today but growing up or whatever where you no, didn't no, recognize yourself. Something is bothering me now yeah. that you know we are discussing so much and actually I completely agree with Madhani Sawa. Are we talking about just the look of Muslims? Is it not a deeper thing than that? No. I think it is a much deeper thing. I mean, if it's just a simple thing, you know, we're discussing so much about the fact that our daddy should be there, skull cap should be there, hijab should be there, that it should be a good thing. I'm just feeling that is it only a matter of look? I don't think so. No, of course I it's think, not. Yeah, it is not. Of course so it's I think not. we should go beyond that. Not here only. I'm just talking as generally in, in the world. That we should leave everything alone. Now, if the French Prime Minister has any problem with hijab, then it is. वो उनकी कंट्री का रूल है उनका हमको भी उसके अगेंस्ट स्टैंड नहीं चाहिए जाने दीजिए व्हाट इज अ लूनेटिक फ्रेंड हैज बिगन टू रिप्रेजेंट आवर कम्युनिटी बट दैट्स व्हाट आई वांटेड टू टॉक अबाउट एंड दैट डेफिनेटली फिल्म्स एंड मीडिया इज टू ब्लेम दैट लूनेटिक फ्रेंड इज रिप्रेजेंटेड इन द मीडिया बिकॉज़ द नॉन लूनेटिक मेनस्ट्रीम इज नॉट या इट्स नॉट बिकॉज़ इट्स नॉट यस बट वेयर इज द मुस्लिम द मॉडरेट मुस्लिम गॉट अ लीडर हु स्पीकिंग आउट अगेंस्ट देम वेयर इज टुडेस जिन्ना where is someone who, by the Today way, is Jinnah, I, yeah, Pakistan. Jinnah was the most secular person you could ever meet. In his I happen life. to play, in his play life, no meet to the Pakistan First Assembly. It was a completely secular. Okay, let's no not debate Jinnah, but you raised the important question there is of no where Muslim is that leader. leader? And Shahrukh is right in saying go beyond the image. And I come Absolutely. to you. Absolutely, I would like to know. I think that I don't believe in that. I'm telling you, I'm in front of you. मैं अगर इनको ऐसा देखूं तो ये मेरी भी गलती है कि मैं नहीं समझता शायद मदनी साहब मॉडरेट या लेस प्रैक्टिसिंग या मोर प्रैक्टिसिंग मुस्लिम हूं बॉटम लाइन इज दैट वी वेदर हाउएवर ही लुक्स आई हैव टू गिव हिम अ चांस व्हाट बोथ कबीर एंड अलेक हैव रेज अबाउट द फ्रिंज रिप्रेजेंटिंग द द बल्क एंड डॉक्टर नायक लेट्स कम टू देम की क्वेश्चंस गोइंग बियॉन्ड द इमेज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट देयर इज देयर आर स्टिल क्वेश्चंस रेज्ड अबाउट फंडामेंटलिस्ट थॉट नॉट दैट नॉट दैट समबडी इज अ मुस्लिम एंड इज अ टेररिस्ट but that somebody sympathizes with the cause. For example, when you are questioned, and, and I know because you deal with live audiences all the time, about groups like the Taliban, groups like the Al-Qaeda, groups like the lashkar e taiba <coughs> how do you resolve those questions? What is Osama bin Laden for you? Main thing what I say, that I cannot base my answer on the media. Because uh, if you ask me, how is bin Laden? If I have to give my answer based on BBC, CNN, it, it will be against the Quran. Quran says... You mean you still have doubts about Osama bin Laden? Yes. Why? I'll tell you why. I have my doubts. Because Quran says... That's a really provocative thing to say and some would say would deeply stereotype. Why? Because I have seen the DVDs produced by the 75 scientists of America. They say it is impossible for few Arabs to come and do the Twin Tower. I have seen... Because I'm a man who travels throughout the world. Come on, Dr. Nai. Come on, Dr. Nai. And I have seen many DVDs and I can give it to you if you see the loose change. If you see 9-11. What I have done, I'm a man of research. And Quran says, when you get the information, check it up before you pass on to the second. I am not saying Bin Laden is a terrorist or a saint. I say, I don't know. Because the proof that has been given, I have got counter proof by the other You haven't seen his Al Jazeera videos? Of course I've seen. Huh? That's not evidence. I'll tell you, I've gone to Malaysia. There was a couple who were doctors who went to Malaysia. And they told that, you know, people normally say that the Taliban, the Taliban are beating the women. So she told me, I'm sure the gynecologist, those people can't be Taliban. I said, why? I thought they were Taliban. They said, I've been in Afghanistan. The way the Taliban tied the turban, the people that were shown on natural geography, people that were shown on BBC and CNN, they can't be Taliban because the turban were not... But then, not you know, there is no end to conspiracy no, theory. But there is a deeper, so there is a deeper, there is a deeper problem here, sir. There are so I many millions of people. And I, I want to say this to you with no offense. There are so many millions of Muslims who follow you, who hang on every word you say. And you are saying this to them. Najib, is that, there a danger that, in that? That's the reason I cannot say something wrong. I'm not saying you the same. Because I've got okay, no 
okay, you made your point. You made your point. Najib and then Madhuri Sahab. You must intervene because I think the Sahib will not give. Madhuri Sahab 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 will not I mean, we have to be reasonable, and and we have to understand that there are a large section of regular Muslims who are against any kind of extreme Islamization. Islamization by itself is welcome, but the kind of interpretation that the people are giving is absolutely not kosher. Okay, कभी भी कहूँगा, जी, जितने भी ये लोग हैं, जिनके बारे में आप सवाल कर रही हैं और दो different तरह के जवाब मिले हैं आपको, हम मेरा firm belief پورا پورا اعتماد کے ساتھ مجھے یہ یقین ہے کہ یہ جو لوگ بھی یہ کام کر رہے ہیں چاہے وہ کسی بھی نام سے ہوں یہ ہومینیٹی کے دشمن ہی ہیں اسلام کے بھی دشمن ہیں اسلام کے دشمن ہیں at the heart of this is the deeper question of who speaks you know I take Shah Rukh's point we focus too much on the image then I take Soha's point that we focus too much on the fringe what do we focus on? I mean, I think at least we would I think we would we agree on that. I focus too much on the religious identity of the lunatics, also or the guys we call terrorists. Why should we represent them or, well, or identify them? As, I've, I've, I've met them. I've, I mean, you you met them identity. in Kashmir. Yeah. I've seen them in in Afghanistan. Half of them seem to have other reasons. Kasab is uh, joined the, his organization to get free access to guns and money, not because he felt for jihad or Islam. The pe I mean, that was the point. In fact, in my film, and New York, I come up in all my research as well. Actually, eight or nine out of ten of them are not even doing this for religion. Not for jihad. Sh uh, Shahrukh, so how do you want to take Alex's point? He's saying, who's the person? Who's my leader? Who is speaking for me as a Muslim? Some would say to you, Alec, why do you need but someone to speak for you as a Muslim? Muslim? I don't feel the need. I, I have various things that I'm passionate about. I've been educated, but yet I feel passionate about lack of literacy in this country. I feel, um, you know, sometimes that there's stereotyping of women in commercial cinema. I feel offended sometimes by a lot of things, not necessarily something that is touched by me personally or not. But certainly I would feel the need more to stand up uh, for secular ideals, for national ideals, as opposed to divisive, sort of uh, divisive identity. But then the fatwa yeah. that was passed said very clearly that anyone, anyone, whether a Muslim or a non-Muslim, who commits an act of violence against innocent people is committing an act against the Quran which says if you do that, but you, are, you are committing an act against the whole isn't of this humanity. Paradox, isn't this paradoxical that on the one hand we are saying keep religion out of it. On the other hand, we actually do need our religious clergy, in a sense, as we did with this fatwa, to, to sort of restore the perspective right. about Islam. Every job, <coughs> every, I won't call it a job, but whether it's a religion, whether it's any other uh, aspect of life, specialists have to be there. And I truly believe the clergy, uh, the ulemas, uh, the mullahs, they're all these specialists. You they don't think they're the fringe as... as, as, as no, I don't think so. I don't think you cannot even... I don't think you can ignore them. Yeah. I just think it's very important that this uh, whole culture for every religion, the guys who are, know it the best, need to be there. We need to understand. Maybe mm -hmm. more than we need to understand, they need to explain it in a way which is understandable. Yes. And I truly believe, like if you were to ask me personally, like you asked, okay, why do we talk about a religious identity? Whether I don't have a choice now. This is what I'm born as. And I love being born you as a You have a now. choice, sir. No, I mean, I didn't have I had a choice and I gave it up at the age of 18 when so I, I could vote. No, absolutely. I make the choice. I had it. I've made it. And I want to be Muslim Good. and I'm very proud to be one. Now I am letting my children know about the religion. I think I know the best in the most understandable, nice manner. And, inshallah, they will also be Muslims. But I'm not going to teach them perhaps uh, uh, the whole, the, the clergy. Uh, very strict way of Islam. I will teach them the way Not I Not a puritanical interpretation. Absolutely. So I'm going to teach it to them uh, like this. Okay, I need to take a quick break with these young girls. We're trying to make a point for a long time. Yeah, break. actually this is a real life incident that happened in class. Now this girl, she just stands up and she says that uh, why do you differentiate? What if a mother has a good child and a bad boy? Now who would you really, uh, would, would the mother really say um, do away with the bad uh, son? Or would, he, would she train him to become a good guy? And, you know, indirectly, in an inch, she was identifying the bad guy with a, for a Muslim, to be a Muslim, and the good boy to be a Hindu, which was very surprising, and she didn't really realize it, she being a her Muslim herself. All right, so there's a... Uh, you want to say something? 
Uh, I want to know that uh, uh, the definition of Islam and Muslim keeps on changing from person to person or with the same one definition of Islam and Muslim? Is there any source or authentic source to know what is the right definition of Islam and Muslim? But is there a, so you want to take that before I take a break? We all interpret faith in a very private way. I believe so. And I have had a secular upbringing and I've read the Bible and uh, I've read parts of the Gita and parts of the Quran and I think that ultimately it is between, as I said earlier, God and yourself and your personal private relationship with Him and only He will judge whether you are a good anything. Alright, we'll take a quick break. In our last segment, in our last segment, what does our panel believe is at the heart of the minority debate, what, what disturbed Karan so much aside from that conversation in New York that this is a theme that seems to resurface in a lot of your work. What is simmering under the surface? We take a look at that in final comments after the break. Welcome back to We the People. In this last segment, what is at the heart of the debate around the minority identity in India? It seems to be an abiding theme more recently in the Indian film industry. Why is that? What do they believe is the central crisis? Before we get final comments from our panelists, let's hear some voices from the audience. There is a question about why we focus on the lunatic fringe as such and that most of them do not, in fact, and I agree, most of them do not turn to terrorism for anything to do with religion. But sadly, the ones who are turning to terrorism are using religion as their cloak. Your religion is being used falsely. Somewhere can we say that you have a duty to defend it? Definitely the moderate voice or so-called moderate mm. voice should speak up. Now the problem is that the moderates are so frittered away and they're so sort of blasé about things. They don't have a platform. And frankly, we don't get that much space on the media as the lunatics get. And those who you are extremists, they are standing and fighting. How much access do Muslims have in a routine corporate world and all that? Like, when a CV comes in front of you, does a corporate take a pause, like the person sitting in that hot seat to give a job and all that? So, Shara, quick comment from you, because we've had some people from the film industry who have spoken about it is difficult to get a house for a Muslim in Mumbai. You said you've never really experienced any real prejudice. But do you no, know I, people who have? I, I, I wouldn't know and I'll, I can just, uh, you know, because I think I should just joke about this. I went, uh, that's why I didn't go looking for a flat. I thought I'll just buy a whole building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'd, I'd be very honest about this whole thing. I think, kahin pe, kabhi kabar, aisa issue, har cheez mein, chai Hindu hai, chai Musulman hai, vegetarian hai, non-veg hai, <laughs> yeah. problems hoti hai. I think we should just try to contain it a little and not make it an issue. Har, har religion ke andar, uh, fundamentalists can mislead youth by giving this garb of, this opium, they say religion yeah. is the opiate of the masses. You can convince anyone that it will happen, you Good orators, uh, young people who don't have a job, easily misled by Islamic mm. uh, fundamentalist or Hindu fundamentalist or if there is something as a Christian fundamentalist. All right. I'm a big fan of yours, but Kurban, I think uh, it used sensationalism and sort of uh, making the terrorist a hero. It made me feel like I was supposed to like Saif Ali Khan at the end of it. I mean, that's not right. We never wanted you to like or dislike. We were going to the beats of a character. And actually, there was a lot of negativity that we got. And we were saying that we were succumbing to stereotyping as well, which was never the case, never the intention. I completely disagree with the film Kurba. And I've told him so. No, but what the, disturbed you yeah, about Kurba? I just felt there was a group of people in hijab, with a dadi, with a skull cap. Everybody was bad. I did not see one good person. This is the image sometimes we have of the fringe Muslim groups and I don't think we should uh, in any which way. I mean, it's a picture. Possibly, I also don't take flaws it, it was not our intention this, and it yeah, went. Maybe, I mean, I'm all for making whatever kind of film you want to and putting it out there. Absolutely. I'm against censorship. But maybe as a society we're not ready for it and we require some kind of sensitive um, uh, film Filters. making. Or really has to be the last question. Why are people just looking at the people who are killing other people for jihad. I'm going to jihad. There are 50 people asking me that uh, you're a Muslim, you pray. I said, yes, I pray. So they're like, what are you, your views about the Taliban? I'm striving, I'm struggling myself explaining to them. And why don't the people portray the good side of jihad? What I'm doing, what he's doing, what everyone is doing. I have to take last comments and uh, let me start with you, Dr. Nayak. The Muslim should know how to reply to the misconception about Islam. 
Today, if you analyze the media, for example, just about more than a week back, yeah. you found in the headlines that there was a bomb in Pune, about 19 people were killed, yeah. suspects Muslim. Same time, there were about 16 policemen killed, <laughs> that was killed also by the mosque. It came that as was also brief. a headline. Why are you saying Muslims killing? So the others are Maoists, the others are you know some other organization, but the Muslims are a religious uh, grouping. It's, it's weird. Why don't we say, you know, whatever those people are, I mean, why do we always have to divide it in? Yet, Madhani Saab, you felt the need to use the, the Avant to do that fatwa against terrorism. Where did that fatwa come from? Why didn't you stand up? No, but what? When you stand up, people didn't stand up. Today, there is also the position that in the name of Islam, the jihadi tehreek is trying to do something out of the world. हमने कहा ये जिहादी नहीं है फसादी है रीजन टू आस्क वाई दैट फतवा वॉज वॉज लॉन्च वॉज एग्जैक्टली दैट एंड द आइडिया वॉज रिमूव द वर्ड इस्लामिक फ्रॉम टेररिज्म देर आर टेररिज्म बाई पीपल हु आर प्रैक्टिसिंग अ नॉन इस्लामिक एक्शन दैट वॉज द थिंग एंड आई जस्ट लाइक टू से वन थिंग सिंस इज द लास्ट चांस वेन इंदिरा गांधी वॉज असैसिनेटेड I was so upset, I wrote just a few lines, which I'd like you to have. It said, I am an Indian, not because I am a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or a Sikh. I am an Indian because if I am not, who am I? Najib, last thoughts? Ghalib has said, Hum kaha ke dana the, dana comes from Dadish Pant, intellectual. Hum kaha ke dana the, kis hunar mein yakta the, بے سبب ہوا زا غالب دشمن آسما اپنا سوہا I think I have a number of identities as someone who lives in Bombay I happen to be Muslim I am an Indian and I think that my aspirations have nothing to do with my religion or my faith I mean I want a big house I want to get married I want a family I want to be successful and that's who I am Karan I've always felt very strongly and I feel strongly because it comes from a space of understanding around me. I'm not saying a film can change a mind space, it can't change the mental makeup of this country. But if you can go back home and question your beliefs about a community, then I think maybe I've serviced cinema in some way. Uh, I personally feel as a Muslim, I'd like to tell every Muslim <coughs> that uh, uh, if you don't know your religion well enough, if you're not able to practice it well enough, if your knowledge is less, Allah Ta'ala aapko maaf kar denge. Like in being a Muslim, if you are not able to explain your religion to the other people who are not understanding it, ki dunya aapko maaf nahi karegi. You need to be very, very clear that we cannot take this time ki agar aap samajhte nahi, mat samjho, mein to ladunga nahi. Acceptance of this and explaining is what I think in the long run will sort out the problem. Well, I think it's fair to say uh, uh, where we started that there is a crisis, but I think to hear all of you today, you may not agree on everything, but you agree on a lot of basic core things at the heart of it. And one is, I think as Kabir said, that terrorism doesn't have a religion. 